to another video guys today we are going to be doing something i never thought i was going to be doing for a while and that is creating an enclosure for the dwarf white isopods um took me a long time um i got some clips of them i'm going to show you here they're in here right now they've been here for a while there's one right over there i don't know if you guys can see that the camera's focused there's a few but um these guys i have decided to not get them for a long time i have over 70 species now um, I decided not to get these guys because I did not want them to infest any bin or anything like that. Even though I know I could have bought bins like this to help prevent that. And then some other things, I just decided not to get them. But today, we are going to be making the enclosure for them um, with the dirt. My mix of the dirt that I'm going to put for them. These guys are a more tropical species. So um, definitely, I don't have to cut any holes in here, which is great. And that is why I'm going to be using it. Uh, the reason why I got one that's so much taller that I'm probably going to use, I'm probably only going to use this much amount of space. The reason why I got someone, one that's so much taller um, is because I do not want to open this um, this container up for air. I do not want to drill holes in it. I do not want to do anything that will aid in the escape of the dwarf whites. So what I went ahead and did is just got a taller bin so it could hold more air. So I only have to open it up maybe once a week or so. Um, and then another good thing about it is that it's going to be very little maintenance just because um, having no, no air holes in there means there's going to be no real water, no, no uh, humid evaporation or water evaporation in there to make it um, any less humid. So it's going to stay pretty much the perfect enclosure for them when it comes to the humidity. And then when we add the substrate as well as some other stuff and, you know, sometimes putting in some of the bug burger morning wood in there, it's going to be a great environment for them overall. But let's go ahead and get right over to the mixture and see what I'm going to use. This is going to be a little bit shorter of a video because I don't think there needs to be too much explained on it. But uh, let's go right over, which is right here. I have it already ready. Um, down here, sorry, this is actually when I, uh, that bin right there, which is a lawn, an old laundry basket. Um, I use that for every time I boil leaves, I put it in there for the drain and then I blow a fan through the side. Um, just so it can dry a little bit faster and then I can bag up everything and bring it to shows. Then right here we have our organic potting soil. So you guys can see what organic potting soil I use. It is from Just Natural. I get it at my local Menards. Um, it's organic with worm castings and stuff like that. So it's definitely great. So when I use this soil later on to mix in with for my plants and sometimes for my enclosures, um, I will use pre-used isopod um, dirt and stuff. But what, what I do with that is that I do put it in the deep freezer, let everything freeze, um, but then the nutrients are still in there. I let all the ice pods freeze and springtails, and I'll restart that enclosure um, inside of a tank. So that's where I get my 30-gallon tank and also the anole of the varium that you guys have seen in other videos. But all this is right now is, a, is a leaves from my backyard. Um, from the three years I've been here, I definitely know for sure that no pesticides have been used anywhere around my yard or my neighbor's yard because they have chickens and they don't use pesticides for theirs either. Um, so basically, I don't have to worry about anything um, when it comes to my leaves. I've been using these for three years now since I've been living here, three, four years. So it's been a good mixture for me. So these leaves mixed with some of the organic dirt that you guys can see right here, as well as the sphagnum moss. All we're going to do is, um, without the tripod right next to me, all we do is just mix this up into a nice mixture. So basically, just like this, just mix it up until it's well, well sorted through. Um, what the sphagnum moss in here is going to do, it's going to leave a little bit, uh, some pockets of air um, within the soil, which is going to be great for aerating it, for allowing the dwarf whites to be able to travel a little bit more. And it helps hold the burrows, at least from my experience, it helps hurt. Uh, hold the burrows that ice pods are going to make, especially the dwarf whites if they like to be within the dirt. Now, the dwarf whites are a species you're not going to notice as much. Um, um, they're a species you're not going to notice as much, like if you had the dairy cows or something like that. They do not travel too much on top of the dirt, but you will see them a lot of times, but they're not mainly on the top side of the dirt. They're usually underneath uh, burrowing around, and that's why I want to create a good mixture so they can burrow and live a good life underneath. Now, once these guys do breed for us, um, we are going to be bringing them to shows so you guys can actually buy them from us. 
um, just for right now, until they get uh, established and sorted, um, we are not going to be bringing them to the shows. But you guys can see that we are breeding them. Um, some of you guys have asked me what my business name is or what my business page is. And um, if you go to featuredcreatures.shop, You'll be able to find my, you'll see, you'll see my face on one of the first videos, the welcome video that's on the front page. You'll see my face on there. Um, that's my business and we focus on breeding um, feeders, high quality feeders as in Dubia. And then you got isopods for um, um, one of the uh, microfauna for enclosures for bioactive. So we do Dubias, orange heads, Madagascars, Halloween hissers, um, chrome roaches. We got a few other roaches as well. We're going to get into a few other feeders. We have seven different species of springtails. Um, I think only four of them are out right now um, for sale. But we got a lot of stuff going on. So if you guys are interested in any of that, go ahead and check out some of those. But for now, let's go ahead and finish up this video. So basically all I'm doing is I'm just wetting this until I think it's damp enough. I did leave this soil out a little longer uh, for a few days. So I'm just re-damping it. It wasn't bone dry, but... I want it to be a little bit more wet if we're going to be putting a tropical species in there just so I don't have to douse it so much um, on the top side of it only. So now that that's fully mixed or fully drenched, we're going to just finish mixing it up one more time, get a nice consistency in there. If you guys can see that, that's perfect. That's kind of like what you want right there. You have um, the leaves, you have the sphagnum moss, it's going to keep a lot of humidity in there. And it's going to keep a lot of humidity at different levels of the enclosure as well. So this is why, I think I'm moving that. Yeah, I am. So this is why I like to use this mixture. Now all I'm going to do is now put that inside of here. All right, so this is a perfect mixture. I did wet it a little bit once I put it in there, but this is a perfect mixture of how you want that soil to, um, to be before you put the isopods in there. Now that I got the dirty part over with, I can take my gloves off and zoom in a little bit. But let's go ahead. You guys see in there, that is a perfect, to me, that is a perfect mixture of what you would need for isopods. Sorry about that. Um, now that I don't have the tripod. But if you guys see in there, the springtails are going to be, I didn't, I didn't put anything in there yet. I just have, I do have springtails in with these dwarf whites right here. Um, but I... Probably we'll just be adding a few more because I do have an update that I want to show you guys that I am going to show you in um, that I'm going to show on my business page on Facebook. You guys can see some of the dwarf whites right there. They have been breeding in here and you can see they have some air holes up there, but they have been doing really good. That's they don't even escape. Um, well, they are great escape artists, but um, they, that's how you can just tell that they love to stay in the dirt. Um, the environment out here is not the same. But um, that's how they end up finding another environment real fast and taking over other bins. So that's why I didn't get them for a long time. But what I'm going to be doing now is, let me go back to, there we go. This, what I'm going to be doing now is adding these guys right over to the bin. And basically, for the care of these guys, that's about it. I'm going to sprinkle these guys on top. Just like that. You guys can see these guys right there. There's a few of them, a bunch of babies. Um, there's a bunch over here. These guys are great, um, especially for crested gecko enclosures. I'm just, all I'm doing now is just mixing around, just spreading out the, the soil that they were in throughout the top of the enclosure. And then I'm only gonna be putting these smaller um, bits of cork bark, one, two, and then I got one more grab it earlier but this was the third piece of cork bark now from there you guys can see that one that's right there or the few of them like i said they don't like to come up too much but um once they start exploring their new enclosure then they definitely will come up but all i'm going to do now is come over here so what these are is for a business if you guys see us at any shows we do we are starting to sell master cultures so not small eight ounce containers or 16 ounce containers called master cultures. I mean, real live master cultures that we would consider us master cultures. Um, right now, there's not too much in there. And that is why we are holding them back until we are ready, until we think that they're ready um, to be sold as legitimate master cultures. And I mean, you can take some out, fill up two enclosures with, and um, I just spread out all of my master cultures like this. 
into all of these. <laughs> I think it was 6, 12, um, 24, 30 bins. I just spread all these out to. So um, between all, these are all my cultures up there that are all labeled, that are temperates. I have all of my blue fedoras, whites, oranges, and red springtails over there, as well as the pink springtails and tropical whites. Um, but then all of these are just our temperate white master cultures. So all I'm going to be doing is grabbing one of these, seeing which one is the best um, to um, to be able to take some from, and then I'm going to be putting them right in the enclosure with the uh, isopods. You guys can see we have a lot of springtails in this one, so I think we'll just go with this one for now. We do have to start. We do have to go through all the bins today after I'm done with this video and feed all of them. Um, from the master cultures to um, just my cultures. I have to feed all of them today. But for now, all I'm gonna be doing is taking a few of these, and this is all I do. See the few that are on top? Those springtails, since they like to uh, stay on water, they do just end up floating out. So all I have to do is that, well, and then just pour some in there. You guys can see everything that's on the top. And then I'll just take this rock by itself, you guys can see all of the springtails that are in there right now that just got dumped in there. I know some of them look similar. You can tell by the way that they're walking that they're not, um, um, what are those, the dwarf whites. But all I'm gonna do is just grab this piece of charcoal. It has a okay amount on there and just blow onto it and blow them off. And that's it. That's all I have to do to transfer them over. Now you get a bunch of springtails in there like this in a nice enclosure nice enclosure that's not too wet you guys can see i can still move around the dirt um and it's not being like imprinted because there's too much water on it it's still nice light and fluffy just kind of how you want it um for these guys and i'm not going to because the leaves that i just added are in there i'm not going to be adding any bug bug or anything just yet i want these guys to get established before i overload um or before I add any extra nutrients to their bin. I don't want any mold or anything growing, especially because this is gonna be a bin that there's a big potential for mold growth. Um, so I definitely don't want to do that. But the next thing and last thing that I'm gonna be doing for these guys is going right on here. Let's see if I even, see you guys see I was making temperate labels. Um, I'm gonna clear that. I'm gonna to go to dwarf whites. And let's see if I even have any more left. And it looks like, looks like I still do. All right. Well then this label for the Dwarf Whites, if you guys, brother, P-Touch, um, I'll show you everything that it says on here so you guys can look it up. Uh, if you guys want, this print, this label printer is great. I mean, I have, I have an enclosure that I created over there on the ground for a leopard gecko that's why there's only one plant in it and it's uh, a little bit more drier now um, but that but pothos can hold on to a lot but then over there all of those labels for everything the temperates everything is uh made with this label printer and it works great but for here all i'm going to be doing is putting that right on the front if you guys want this same exact um bin here's the dimensions and what it is and the brand so you guys can actually order that to your house if you wanted to. But overall, guys, yeah, I am done. <laughs> um, that is the basic care or the, ba the just the setup for the isopods right now. So if you guys are interested in any, any of these or any other videos like this, definitely just leave a comment. I've been seeing a bunch of comments already about um, what I should do next for certain videos and what people are looking for. So if you guys are looking for anything, definitely let me know in the comments. And I do see that only 93% of you, um, or really like 7% of you around there, I believe, uh, is not subscribed or are subscribed to my videos. 93% of you are not subscribed. So if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see some other content like this, please leave a comment. Um, and I will definitely get, I'll try my hardest to make a video of uh, what you're asking. I had a guy in the, recently just asked about a soil change. And I'm definitely going to be making that video within, uh, within today or tomorrow so I can post in a few days for you guys as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!